In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hardwire and mount a unit in R7 radar detector in an F-33. Let's go. What's up everybody, I'm Steve and you're watching F33. Now if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe if you're not already and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when a new video drops. Now raise your hand if you love getting speeding tickets. Yeah, me neither. And that's why I just got the unit in R7. Now I'm not saying that speeding is a good thing or that a radar detector is going to protect you against ever getting a speeding ticket. But what I am saying is that it keeps me in check. Now if I'm driving, it's a beautiful day out, I've got the top down and I'm not paying attention to how fast I'm going, it's going to alert me if there are police ahead and to check how fast I'm going. This particular radar detector knows the speed limit because it's equipped with GPS and can alert me if I'm going too fast. So again, I'm not saying go out, get a radar detector so that you can speed. What I am saying is that you can use it as a tool to help you stay in check and thus not get a speeding ticket. Before you get one, you should verify if they're legal in your area. And I'll put a link in the description to a site where you can check that. So why did I choose the unit in R7? What about the R3? People seem to really like that one too. Now I checked out the R3 and while I'm sure it's a really great radar detector, it lacked some of the features that I really liked in the R7 and felt that they were important enough for me to justify the additional cost. The R7 is a bit more expensive than the R3, so if the R7 is not in your budget, the R3 is still a really great unit and would have been the unit that I got had the R7 not been an option. So what makes the R7 so special? Well, I really like the fact that it has arrow indicators for where the signal's coming from. I really like the larger display and the fact that it has built-in GPS and will do auto lockouts. This next thing might be kind of petty, but I really like that the power on the unit comes out of the right side. That way I can more easily hide the wiring when we mount it in the car. Now, as far as mounting options, I'm going to use the provided suction cup mounts, but I'm not gonna use the suction cups. I'm actually going to mount it with 3M tape. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to get it really, really close to the windshield and be hidden. Now, I know a lot of people say they like the blend mounts, but honestly, they're really expensive. And with me being 6'2", I felt that it hung too low. Where I'm gonna place it is actually above the rear view mirror close to the roof of the car. Now I know some people are gonna comment that mounting it there is going to restrict the rear facing sensor, but I just don't see it. And besides 99% of the time that I'm driving the car, the top's down. To me, mounting it here is more beneficial for driver visibility and it also gives the option to be stealthy at the same time. Now to power the unit, I'm choosing to hardwire it into the mirror. And I'll make sure to put a link down below in the description to both the hardwire kit and the R7. Now this hardwire kit is pretty awesome. It allows you to tap into the power for the rear view mirror, which is great. I remember back in the day, I would have to run cables all the way down to the fuse box, which was a really pain depending on the type of car. All right, so now that I've told you why I chose the R7, I'm gonna show you how to mount it. Let's get to the install. So hardwiring the unit in R7 is pretty simple. All you're gonna need is a trim tool and of course the hardware kit and the R7, which I'll link down below uh, in the description. Now to mount it like I'm gonna be mounting it, you'll also wanna pick up some 3M tape. Now I've linked in the description below uh, a specific 3M tape that I found works really, really well in high heat, cold, uh, on glass, so it's, it's gonna be the one that I'm gonna use. And like I said, I will link that down below in the description. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your trim tool, and you're gonna wanna put it in the crack right in the molding, and you're gonna wanna push in just a little bit. And this will 
pry apart the molding, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful because the clips are fragile. Now, once you get the molding unclipped, you're gonna to wanna to pull it apart and you will see this red plug. Now, in the red plug, you're gonna to wanna to tap red to red and brown to black. So basically, the far right one is gonna be where the red taps in and the far left is where the, the black is gonna tap in. When you do this, the hardwire kit comes with smaller taps. You're gonna to wanna to use those smaller taps. The big ones that are on the wire uh, won't fit in there. So you're gonna to wanna to put those smaller taps on. Now it's gonna be really difficult for me to show you while I'm holding the camera, me plugging them in, but I will show you right after I get them plugged in so you can see exactly what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I have black to brown. So the far left is black, far right is red to red, okay? And that is it. So now you're just gonna to wanna to take the rest of the cable. You're gonna to wanna to cable manage it inside the molding. And then we're gonna run a little piece out to the radar detector. All right, so now before we put it all together and zip tie everything, get it all nice and tidy, you definitely wanna check your connections. Okay, so we're just gonna take this, we're gonna plug it in. You can see it powers right up. So we know that this is good. Now, the hardwire kit does come with some zip ties, so I'm gonna use a couple of those zip ties just to make the connections all nice and tidy. Then we're gonna put the molding back on and mount the radar detector. All right, so we're just gonna take our molding and we're gonna put the molding back on here. And there is enough room for the cable to just squeeze in between the mirror and the molding. Perfect. So next, we're going to wanna to clean the glass really well. Uh, I like to use a little glass cleaner, make sure that that part's clean, and then use some isopropyl alcohol, 70%, uh, to get the rest of the window clean. Now that we've got the window all clean, I wanna show you how I put the 3M tape on the suction cup mount. Now the suction cup mount comes without the suction cups attached, and that's fine if you've attached them already, you can take them right out. But essentially I took the 3M tape, I mounted it across the entire back where the suction cups fit in, and I just trimmed the excess around so that it was a perfect fit. Now the cure time on this 3M tape is 72 hours. So I actually did this a few days ago. I let it sit. It's probably been sitting for about 48. I'm sure it's perfectly fine right away, but I just wanna make sure that this is never coming down unless I really want it to come off. In that case, I'll probably have to use some fish line or something like that to get it off. But when we mount it to the window, of course we're gonna have to put the radar detector on it so that we can get the placement right. But then we're gonna wanna leave the radar detector off for at least a couple days so that there's no weight pulling it down. We wanna make sure that this gets a really, really, really good seal against the window. And so that's why we want to uh, avoid putting any weight pulling it off the window, at least for a couple days. It still gives me accessibility to the buttons. It gives me accessibility to the plug. I think this is a good spot. Now, one other thing that you may or may not have to do, it depends on your situation, exact mounting placement, but you may need to put felt strips on the back of the unit if you find that it starts to rattle against the glass. Because again, this is gonna be very, very close. And so any part that may touch, you'll just wanna put either a little piece of felt or uh, the loop side of Velcro right on those places where it touches if you have any rattle.
As you saw, installing the R7 was a piece of cake and can be accomplished in just a few minutes. I'll be giving a full review of the unit in R7 after I've lived with it for a while, so stay tuned for that. Now, as always, I'll put links in the description below to the products used in this video today, as well as a configuration guide for the R7. This way you can get the unit all configured or at least have a good baseline config before you install it and get out on the road. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, smash it if that's what you're into, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next one. God bless.